Good morning. Happy Easter. We are so glad that you've joined us online for worship on this Easter Sunday. Uh, welcome to Good Shepherd Lutheran Church. My name is Josh Bracht. I'm one of the pastors here, and it is a joy to worship with you virtually today. As we get started with worship, we want to lift up just a few announcements of things that are happening uh, around Good Shepherd in the weeks to come. Uh, first of all, I should say that if you're watching online, uh, just a reminder, we also are having an, an outdoor worship service at 10 a.m. on Sunday. So if you're watching this early and you're like, oh, I just couldn't get enough of Good Shepherd, I'm going to go again. You can come uh, on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. It's going to be a little bit different service outdoors, so that we're excited about that. And then coming up in a couple weeks on April 18th, we're going to be starting back to in-person worship. Uh, we're really excited about this to welcome people back into our sanctuary to worship together. Of course, we'll still have a lot of safety things in place, pre-registration, wearing masks, socially distancing, all those things we're used to, but we're going to be worshiping together in person for those who are comfortable. Worship will still be able to be viewed online and live streamed so that those who want to stay and worship from home for a while can do that as well. Uh, there's going to be a lot of information coming out in our, our newsletter and on our website. Check that out. We can't wait to see you in just a couple weeks in person for worship here. Also uh, in April, on the 24th, we're having Be Like Jesus. This is an annual event we do at Good Shepherd. It's going to look a bit different this year. It's usually an overnight retreat for our youth where they come and they spend uh, 24 hours serving, being like Jesus. This year, we're going to continue doing that serving part just without the overnight. So we've got a lot of opportunities to do socially distanced and safe service projects, both here at the church as families together and out in the city and in our community as well. So if you're interested, contact contact Emily Harrow. We'd love to have you participate and be like Jesus this year. Again, happy Easter. We're glad that you are here. Let us begin our worship together. This is the day when tears are wiped away, when shattered hearts are mended, fears are replaced with joy. This is the day that the Lord rolls away the stone of fear, throws off death's clothes, goes ahead of us into God's future. This is the day that the Lord has made. Death has no fear for us. Sin has lost its power over us. God opens the tombs of our hearts and fills us with life. This is the day, Easter day. Christ is risen. Alleluia. <laughs>
Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us pray. O God, you gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, and by his glorious resurrection you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hey, friends. Emily Harrow here. I am the director of Children and Family Ministry here at Good Shepherd Lutheran Church. And I get to tell you today about a really incredible story about how Jesus is always pointing us directly to God. Throughout this last week, we've been hearing stories about people who time and time again move us in a direction away from God. For instance, at their, at, at their last meal together, Jesus tells his disciples that they will betray him. They don't believe that they could possibly betray this person that they deeply love. But we know the story. And we know that Jesus is pointing us to God. Then, Peter denies knowing Jesus. And for a silver coin, Judas tells the people who want to hurt Jesus where to find him. It seems like we're moving away from God. But we know that Jesus points us directly to God time and time again. Jesus is handed over to Pontius Pilate. The people called for Jesus to be crucified on the cross. And it looked like the arrow was moving in, the, in a different direction. But Jesus continued to point us directly to God. Jesus goes on to the cross. And we're think, we think we're being directed away from God. But Jesus asks... For the people's forgiveness and continues to point to God. 
And then the most miraculous event occurs. When women go to the tomb where Jesus was laid after he died, the women found that the stone had been rolled away from the tomb and that the tomb was empty. They felt very sad they couldn't find Jesus. But then an angel appeared and told them not to be afraid. The angel told them that Jesus was not there. Jesus is alive. What seemed impossible happened. Just as God promised, Jesus had risen indeed. Jesus points us towards God. Now I have another thing that I'd like to share with you all a little bit of, uh, that, that explains a little bit more about Jesus and the new life we find in Jesus, but I just, I can't seem to find it. Just give me, just give me a second. I'll, I'll find it. Don't just, maybe, maybe you can help me. Um, does, does anybody see anything behind me? Um, do you, is it, I, I mean, I thought I cleaned up around here, but I just, I can't seem, I can't seem to find it. Wait, what's that? Wait, hey, what's that on my back? Oh, hey, that's the butterfly I was going to show you. So, my friends, this is a butterfly. I cut it out of some purple construction paper. You can make one too. Um, so this is a symbol of new life. And why is it a symbol of new life? Well, butterflies aren't always butterflies. Does anyone know what they start out as? Can you tell me a little bit louder? If you said caterpillar, you would be correct. Butterflies start out as caterpillars and then they turn into butterflies. You see, caterpillars create this cocoon when they're ready to transition into a butterfly. They create this cocoon. It's kind of small, it looks kind of like a rock. And it doesn't look, when they're in this cocoon, it doesn't really look alive. It looks, it doesn't look like there's anything in there. And then something incredible happens and the butterfly comes out of this cocoon. Just like Jesus was dead, was laid in this tomb and came out alive. Jesus brings new life to us all. Brings us Jesus brings us new brings new life to me, brings new life to you, brings new life to everyone. Now, remember that story I was telling you about the women and the angel and how the angel told them not to be afraid? Well, the angel also told them to tell everyone that they knew that Jesus had risen indeed. So now I invite you to tell everyone that Jesus is alive, that Jesus did what God promised, that Jesus has overcome death. And that, my friends, is incredible news. Now, friends, when you're at home, um, you will find in your family faith formation bag a butterfly, stuff to make a butterfly out of tissue paper and a old clothes pin. Um, so I invite you to do that and put it somewhere that will remind you of the good news that we are called to share with everyone we know. This is wonderful. Jesus is alive. Now let's shout it really loud. I'm going to tell you exactly what to shout and we'll shout it out loud together. So you're going to say, Jesus is risen indeed. Alleluia. So let's all try it together really loud. Ready? One, two, three. Jesus is risen. Alleluia. All right, friends, I will see you next time. A reading from Isaiah chapter 25. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples 
a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Second reading is from 1 Corinthians. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ, but each in his own order. Christ the first fruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, after he has destroyed every ruler and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus' body. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. It's interesting, isn't it? Those first women, Mary, Mary Magdalene, and Salome, those faithful disciples who stayed with Jesus during his execution, now heading to the tomb to anoint the body of their deceased teacher, friend, and hoped-for Messiah. For some Jews, this was uh, the custom for three days after burial to go and anoint the body, and so it wasn't unusual for them to be doing this. What I find interesting is the conversation they had while they were on the way. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? So they had collected the spices, waited the three days, and were already on their way to the tomb, all apparently without a plan to actually move the heavy rock and get inside when they arrived. I wonder what they thought would happen when they got there. Why did they go? What led them there? Was it trust? Hopefulness? The assumption that if they did their part, others would do theirs? It's interesting to me that these women went. They went full steam ahead without knowing how to remove the obstacle in front of them. These women make me wonder, which tombs in our lives feel sealed up without hope of being able to open them ourselves? What is it for you that you have to ask, who will roll the stone away for me? What thing do you feel stuck in or feels like it's trapped you inside? What area of life feels impossible to change? Maybe it's addiction or an unhealthy relationship, parenting that feels far short of your best, Maybe you're just stuck in the rut of everyday choices or, or a life direction that doesn't feel life-giving. We each have these areas, these tombs in our lives. We know that what lies behind them is death, if we're brave enough to name it. We don't see a way out, and we certainly don't see strength enough in ourselves to do anything about it. It would take a miracle to shift such a heavy part of our lives and move in a different direction. I suppose that Mary and Mary and Salome could be blamed for poor planning, but to me, to me they're a reminder that sometimes we are called to try, even if we don't all have it figured out, that even if we don't have the strength to do all the work ourselves, that we can at least begin with the peace that's right in front of us. Those women, those first witnesses of Jesus' resurrection, remind me that sometimes the most important part is to show up and to trust 
that somehow we won't be alone in the work. Because sure enough, by the time they arrived to the tomb at the place of death and despair, the stone had been rolled back. The women chose to head toward the work that they knew was important, even with uncertainty, and they discovered that the unmovable obstacle had been moved. Because what Easter teaches us is that God's love, God's gift of life, always does the heavy lifting. But before these women even had a chance to wrap their minds around all that they were seeing, they received a shocking pronouncement. The messenger at the tomb told them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus. He isn't here. Jesus has been raised. The women were coming to the tomb to finalize death, to process death, and instead they were given a message of new life. Jesus had been raised. Not only was the stone rolled away, but the work of leaning into death, of anointing death, was not even necessary anymore. The focal point of their pain no longer held any power at all. The thing behind the sealed tomb, the thing that felt like it was holding their hearts captive, was no longer in control of their lives. It had been transformed into life, into hope, into deep breath in the lungs that had been holding breath back for three long days, both Jesus and their own. Because what Easter teaches us is that God's love God's gifts of life can completely rewrite the narrative that we have shaped our lives around. It can do something entirely new where newness is least expected. So the messenger commissioned the women to go, go and tell their fellow disciples that Jesus was alive, that he was going on ahead of them and that they would see him. This was amazing news. This was the best news. This confirmed everything Jesus had said about who he was and about what God is capable of doing in the world. And yet, the gospel ends with this line. They fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone for they were afraid. The end. Oof. As a woman preacher, it is hard to hear that the women who got their shining moment to be the first proclaimers of the Easter story ran away scared. It's not a great look. But here's the thing. We are here today reading this story. 2,000 years later, we are celebrating the good news from that empty tomb. We are shouting, Alleluia, as we give thanks to a God who brings life from death. So clearly, the story got out. Perhaps the women just needed a minute to take it all in, to pause. Perhaps Perhaps they even needed to sleep on it as they pondered in their hearts all that they had been taught and experienced with Jesus. But then, it seems, they got to smiling, to realizing, maybe to walking, then to running, then to sharing and shouting for joy. Because Easter also teaches us that, that God's love and God's gift of life can turn women into preachers. Even if we don't see it in the story here, something clearly transformed their terror. That's what hope does. It takes fear and infuses it with the question, what if? What if God's love and kingdom are not too good to be true? What if we can trust Jesus and all that he says? What if it really is safe to hope 
and hope again? What would happen if we leaned into life instead of death? What if? Because Easter teaches us that God's love, God's gift of life, replaces fear with courage, replaces uncertainty with strength, and replaces silence with shouts of good news. And here is the good news, my friends. God's love could and would not be held hostage by death. Jesus came into the world to show us a better way, the way of love, the way of God's kingdom. Jesus came to lead us away from unhealthy choices and addictions, from toxic relationships, our greed and our scarcity thinking, our dividing walls and our power grabbing. Jesus came to tell us we could lay it all down and stop trying so hard to climb to some made-up imaginary top. Jesus said, instead, instead we could share and give and serve and forgive and welcome and encourage and build up and find identity as beloved children of God together in community. Jesus said we could do all of this without worrying that we'd appear weak or that our lack of worldly success would somehow devalue our existence. But as a humanity, we didn't like Jesus' way. It was easier for us to go about the way that we always had, no matter how little it really satisfied. It felt safer to keep looking out for ourselves, to make sure our needs were met, to create hierarchies of those who matter and those who deserve more and those who are simply in the way and must be stepped over, and then to build whole systems to reinforce those hierarchies. As a humanity, we refused to trust in grace. We kept trying to earn our place in the world We refuse to trust that there's enough love to go around for all of us. As a humanity, we said that Jesus' way sounded really good on paper, but in practice, it would ask us to give more of ourselves away than was really comfortable, and we weren't willing to do it. And so as a humanity, we tried to silence this revolutionary of love by executing him. We met his peace with violence and said to God, no, we're not interested in your love or in your way. And we said this in the form of a cross, an ancient day electric chair. But what Easter teaches us is that God's love, God's gift of life, turns our cross-shaped no into an empty tomb-shaped yes. God heard our refusal to accept love and doubled down, saying, I'm going to love you anyway. You can try to put heavy stones and obstacles in front of my love and life for you, but I will always tear them down and roll them away. You can try to seal yourselves into places of death and despair, but I will always come to you and I will find you and I will give you more love and more new life because there is plenty to go around for everyone. I will never stop loving you or give up on wanting what's best for you. This proclamation might seem unsettling, or even scary at first. It changes everything about the way that we thought we had to move through life. But once we pause and ponder and get through the initial shock, we too can run and tell the amazing news of what God's love, God's gift of life can truly do in, through, and for this world. 
Friends, we don't have to stay in our tombs. The stones have been rolled away. The entrance is open and waiting. We can live into freedom and hope. We can breathe deeply, find our strength to at least begin the journey, to take the steps for what's right in front of us. And we can head out to meet Jesus, who has gone ahead of us into the world. And we can do this with hearts full of Easter promises. Alleluia. And thanks be to God. Amen. let us confess our faith through the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Praise to you for your power revealed in the resurrection. 
Fill your church with the power of your love that is stronger than death. Send us to tell the good news wherever death holds sway. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Praise to you for your life at work in the resurrection. Fill all of creation with your life. Bring it to blossom and flourish. Use it to remind us of your persistent grace. Cultivate our care for what you have made. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Praise to you for the peace made possible in the resurrection. Fill the nations with your peace. Draw together people of all nations and languages, reveal new possibilities, and inspire new beginnings. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Praise to you for the hope of the resurrection. Fill all in need with this hope. Those who are afraid or confused, those who are sick or suffering, those who are dying, and those who grieve. Especially we lift to you today Pastor Jim, Pastor Matt, Bernie, and Bob. We pray for Marge, Mark, Barb, and Howard. Assure them of your promises. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Praise to you for the joy of your resurrection. Fill this church with joy as we are called your beloved in baptism. Multiply this joy so that we share it at all times, at home, at work, and in our community. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the risen Lord be with you always. And we invite you to share a sign of God's peace with one another if you are worshiping together with your family at home or to send a message of hope and peace to someone who needs to hear that today or in the week ahead. May God's peace fill your hearts today. At this time, we give thanks to God for our offering, for that which God has given us, that we get to return back to God's holy work Thank you for your financial support and your generosity that continues the mission of Good Shepherd moving throughout these days and into the future. Gifts can be made either by mailing a check to the church office or giving online or through our mobile app. And the, the financial support that you give enables so many incredible ministries that help people grow in relationships with one another and in their connection to God. So thank you for making this ministry possible. And now... I invite us to pray together with one voice the prayer that our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now receive this blessing. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus. The God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace and share this good news. Thanks be to God.